And I only, I got up late for one thing. It's weird. God time is weird as shit, man. Fuck, dude. I swear to God. I don't know what the hell. I got up and it was after five. I don't understand how it's just now six. That makes no sense. I have been doing so much stuff. What the fuck? Oh my God. This keeps happening. The other day I even got up and no, there was nothing that matched the times. No, the clock on the wall that goes by a battery, you know, the, the kind with the wheel, whatever. And then the digital ones on the stove and then the one on my phone. None of them matched what and i keep noticing like you'll be doing something start noticing because you'll be doing so i feel like my nose is really boogery so now it's gonna drive me crazy uh uh that and i'm still doing black seed oil i've been still doing all my stuff i added more stuff oh my God. i don't know maybe i'm reacting to all this stuff or maybe we're just heavily poisoned out here um especially when i go outside which i'm gonna go outside um today and tomorrow, because it's supposed to be sunny, try and get, hopefully the sun will peek through the trees a little bit. <laughs> so mental. Um, but um, I'm going to, um, man, I'm all over the place already. Oh, and now I've got a high-pitched scream coming in my ears. What the fuck? This is so weird. Um, uh, when I've been sitting here, though, lately, I have just the weirdest shit with time. I swear to God, this kind of stuff keeps happening. You'll just get up, and you're just like doing stuff and everything, and then you go sit back down, and it's like five minutes. It's like, fuck, I just cooked a pizza. How could it be five minutes? <laughs> like, this is so weird. It's like you get absorbed in something that you enjoy or something, and, and it's like that time separates from the other time. And I like to go into the time that separates from this time, because this time... It's tedious as fuck, man. You just look at it. I can't believe. I swear to God. Some of these days, I feel like that they have stretched out so many hours. It's weird. But then, um, if you can get yourself lost in pockets of time, those periods of time, it's like, oh, it's more enjoyable. Things are going. Things are moving. Then you go when you go back to this. It's like you move in and out of wormholes or portals or something. It's trippy. And stuff just gets weirder and weirder. So easy. Like, I am not even... I can't... I, I don't even know how to explain this stuff. Like, this is totally a different level. And it's totally is going faster and faster and faster. And something is just killing the back of my head, man. It has been doing it for a couple days. And I keep trying to do all these stretches. Like, I try and come up with every possible stretch I can think of. To try and pull the muscles, separate them from each other, pull them apart from each other. It's like, fuck. And then I saw um, uh, some, I don't know, she, was, she wasn't, no, she's a physical therapist. And she was talking about, uh, because, and I noticed sitting next to my granddaughter. My one granddaughter who's really uh, lanky like me, she... Um, She's always, like, she's had a device in her hand since the fucking moment her hand worked. And, um, and I, I mean, their grandpa, the, my ex, the grandpa of the whole situation, he's very into techie and science. Remember, he lives with a scientist, and he's into growing and farming. But it's like, we've conquered the earth. We've done this mastery. Because there's no connection, like, in the soul. But he sees the soul in nature and birth. It's trippy. I don't know. There's something he's blocking. And I don't know what it is, but I think it's about to go down. Like, I think that... Like when I, when I watch the different people and I understand what's going on and I notice the things that they have that are interfering or whatever, it's kind of like you're watching to see, you know, I'm, it's like, I'm an observer in the experiment. You know, I'm also watching. I'm not just caught up in the drama and, oh my God, oh my God, what are we going to do? What can do? You know, like everybody's just sitting around like, oh Jesus, it's the end of the world into the world what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go get saved I'm gonna go get saved I'm gonna go to heaven you know they just fucking lose their minds and you know this whole thing is about the calming yourself and sitting with yourself and your guides will tell you like there is nothing to worry about I mean they'll tell you up to a point they won't tell it's not like they're sitting there telling me like um 
you know, how this exactly goes down. Like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I hear all these different people and some things are things that I have also seen in my head. And so those ones are always the ones I intersect over, you know, it's like, okay, as a confirmation, I'm, I'm picking up on this. They're picking up on this. Like yesterday, I was another one that I saw yesterday afternoon and he was saying, um, or she was saying, she also is, talks about the money thing and the new earth and stuff like that. But she does, I, no, I think she does do from a spiritual perspective. I've just heard her talking so much about the money stuff. Oh, but she did say something interesting yesterday. Um, so she said that, um, the thing that she said was interesting is Charlie, she follows Charlie. And so what's kind of trippy too, is that these people like her, so her, me, these people who I've never met, we're kind of intersecting now on social media of when we were the ones following Charlie in the very beginning, because there was a certain group of us that were following him all the way back when he first came out. I saw him, I think he was like two weeks into his account. And the reason that caught me was it was talking about the new king. And so I was interested about that because I knew that we're moving out of uh, being governed. We're moving into freedom and being more of a village mind type, you know. And if a village feels it needs leadership and, you know, I think it would be more people will go more with committees and stuff. Let's all get together. Let's let's do this together. Because, I mean, some people may try some different things. You know, they may try. How, let's have a mayor. And then people get sloppy and lazy, put it on him. And then he either starts cutting corner, you know. So people are going to have to start taking responsibility. And that is a part of this learning, you know, the learning curve that we're experiencing right now. It, you know, for the people who are paying attention. The people who are paying attention, there's a purpose. The reason they're paying attention is like the seeding for the new world. And the ones who aren't, I mean, they could be just going to another, like, it's nothing that any of us need to stress about. Even when this mass occurrence happens and a whole bunch of people leave, there's nothing for us to really stress about. I saw a video yesterday. I mean, it's going to be stressful as fuck. But in all a spiritual world, like that is that when you're, when you're stressing out, you're just playing the game. When you understand you're in the game and you sit back as the observer, then you are, you're not caught up in the drama. You're not caught up in the tears and stuff. And it, it does, you know, it can appear that you are cold and stuff and it is hard to get all caught up. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be some occurrences I'm going to be all caught up in, you know, we are all going to have things that are going to be, that are for us is for us. So, yeah, there's going to be things that we are here to experience. So we're going to all go through our own things. And the thing is, is just as you're experiencing, just keep remembering, you know, somehow in the back of your mind to keep your own fucking sanity is, okay, this is a game. This is a game. This is a game. This isn't real. This person didn't just leave me. I can, I'm going to be able to see them just like time where it seems like it's tedious as fuck, but all of a sudden, then it is when you're doing something you like, it goes super fast. So just remember that time is not the same. Like somebody can seem like they leave you and to you, it could seem like it's been fucking months, years, and then decades. And then you go and it's like, it was yesterday. And, um, it's like, you're in a dream. You're just, you're in a dream. And so that girl, she was also talking about the, um, one thing that she also said, cool, I got to get this in there too, is she was talking, because she gets a lot of people asking her questions about the money thing and stuff like that. And um, I don't even know if I finished saying about Charlie, but Charlie went into the hospital. And so she was questioning, like, what in the hell? Like, what in the hell? Why? At this point in the game, like I've been saying for how long now? A year and a half or something. Fuck them. I'm not going to, I don't give a shit. You know, I'll lay here, I'll fucking, I will fucking, um, bandage my own wounds, sew myself up before I want to go in. You know, if I feel like I'm having a stroke, I'll fucking, you know, then that's my exit. You know, I, so I don't know what the deal is. It's a strange, a hundred percent strange that Charlie will go to the hospital and be in the hospital and then he's gotten an MRI, so then that makes you think, okay, something with his head or his brain. And him and I are the same age. And so, uh, um, 
You know, and I know a lot of people get in fear and then he's got young kids and stuff. He's got the pressure, you know, his wife, his kids could be like, no, you're going to the hospital, you know. So we don't know what's going on. It's just weird when you hear Charlie's in the hospital. Like what? Especially the other guy, not Simon. What was the other guy? Because it was the three of them that were always talking. And he did go in the hospital and he didn't come out. And everybody, you know, uh, even the thing that got him in there where they were saying they were pretty sure it was an aerosol. And that was one thing, too. Yesterday, I went to the market, and then and even when I was driving home, after I left, my throat started hurting really bad. I started getting really stopped up, and I was like, they are fucking sh There's something that is being sprayed. There is motherfucking something that they are... There's no fucking, and then people go out, and then they think they're getting sick. I saw a, gr a group of fucking people. I, this is right when I was coming, so I didn't see them in the store. I just parked. I got, um, start walking towards the cart, and a group of people is right there, and they all, you know, lock eyes with me, and um, I look over. I, I, a lot of people look at me. I'm not even trying to say it in, a like, a certain way or something. I just, people do. They, uh, you know, it's, it's not like I can walk around and be a, a ghost or invisible. I've never, never been able to do that. And so, um, they all look at me and I look at them and the one, they all doing these masks. I, I, in the, and, and, and then you, the people you see who are, they look half dead and it's all out of fear. It's out of not thinking for yourself. It's out of not tuning into your body, listening. Is, how's my body feel? You know, when I, and then but you go and you spray this shit and then people go and they start feeling like, Oh my God, I went out in public. Now my throat hurts. I'm getting sick. Oh, they panic. They go run, get a test, start swabbing. Oh my God, I know I'm sick. What am I going to do? Oh my God, look on the news. Oh, Jesus Christ, there's the monkey. There's the, oh, you know, and they've got everyone out. And then the people are like, oh, what's the symptoms? Oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. It's like, they've got people so fucking scared of death. It's just mental. And um, can you imagine a video game of all of the players were scared they were going to die? And they go around the call, no, 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 back up, no, no, no. It would be so funny. <laughs> funny. Somebody should do a video game like that. The real life video game. People are scared as fuck. Wait, do I have a map? God, no, I'm not crossing that. Oh, no, I can't cross up there. Nope, nope. <laughs> Everybody's so scared. Um, so one of the other things that that girl said, because there was a couple. One of them was um, that uh, travel is going to be changing with the... Um, the um, Oh, the patents that are going to be released and all of the scientific explosion, the technological explosion that we're going to experience. And so the highway, she said there's going to be like a super highway and we're going to realize that we're closer, that we're not as far apart. So, you know, where they tell us we're further, that's what I'm telling you. There's some bullshit, especially somebody the other day, they showed me, uh, they were doing uh, footage. They're out riding horseback across the country and somebody's videotaping them because it was videotaping. So in the scene of them walking and carrying it with their horse and stuff, it's, it's pretty cool. But um, he goes uh, to show Oklahoma and the fucking... I've been in Oklahoma a lot. I don't remember mountains, but I, I'm, I'm just going wacky. I swear to God at this point, like the tree, everything around here is like our, our scene is changing. It's changing. Our set is changing before our eyes. I swear to God. So the Oklahoma is so always just this footage going out and y'all down South, y'all can correct me. Or maybe I've just jumped into a timeline and the timeline I grew up in Oklahoma's flat as fuck. And we had to drive a million times. Because my parents moved from Kansas because my grandparents were farmers and they moved because my dad was a opportunist. You know, he's a go getter and he um, moved to Dallas. And so we had to do that drive so many times when I was a kid from Dallas up to um, like Kansas City, Missouri. We would do that. So I drove through Oklahoma so many times and I do not remember mountains. I just remember thinking all the time it's so flat. This is the flattest drive. Like you can just, I don't know. There was some hills at some point. I just don't remember. But when he, so when he looks out and shows 
It was like all of Oklahoma. The thing that was trippy was because when I'm driving and I go, and I'm, and I'm in the mountains, and I have a Canada mountains in front of me. The ocean's supposed to be over here, but the mountains go over there. Someone was like, so is Vancouver? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, that's what I'm saying. Some of this shit does not make sense. It's our, it's our perspective. It's our view. And I have just ever since, I don't even know. I just, I feel certain about this, even no matter how crazy I sound when I say this shit, I just, I just feel so certain of it. And, um, but uh, the, the, you know, about the portals, the movement, the backdrop. So anyways, that when I'm driving, how it looks for me is how it looks for him. It was like, they just took the backdrop here and put it there and he's riding along, you know, and then when you're riding along. You don't ever get to the place you see ahead. I mean, I used to do that all the time when we would be driving because like, we drove a lot of drives a lot when I was a kid. And, um, my parents were always, we would go on trips and, um, I would, I would, we would be driving and I would say, what is, um, we didn't go on trips all around. We go on trips to drive up to see their parents. It was like, go on trips to go see family. We did drive up to Yellowstone and that was a lot of, and then drove from Yellowstone to California. So there was a lot of, you know, I, I like road trips and I, we did some when I was a kid, I guess maybe that's why I got it. But, um, so when, um, the, what was I going to say? The, oh, because we would be driving and I would always be like, how far is that up there where we can see? How far is that? And uh, sometimes my dad would be like, it seemed that that's where I got this like 20 miles. It's 20 miles to the horizon. That's what I was constantly being told. It's 20 miles to the horizon. So then I would wait the 20 miles, but you never get to the place that you could see. You could see it, but it doesn't look the same when you get there. And so there is... Um, is you know if you just pay attention to it it can sound wacky unless you pay attention to it and you see what i'm talking about and you put into that perspective but you never you you never get to the place you see ahead so backdrops make sense to me because we're chasing our tails here and we're moving through portals in a, a structured way in a controlled fashion and so Anyways, so she's seeing in the technology. Like I said before, we're going to be traveling way different. And that's kind of like what I'm, you know, waiting on. It's not like I'm waiting. I, I mean, I'm not just sitting here in a cave, never go out of my home and never talk to anybody because I'm waiting for the future. You know, I go out and interact, but it's not like, you know, I, I haven't found anybody out here who I'm in alignment with. And I'm not going to cry about it. You know, I'm going to sit here and be like, okay, I know I'm supposed to be doing these other things, you know, they tell me, they show me, they explain it to me. Like, um, so, you know, I'm not going to stress about it, but, um, uh, I know that, you know, like my daughter, you know, the one who is, um, she's been traveling a lot, a lot. You all know how many trips I'm like, like, she's going to Mexico. She's going to South America. She's going, you know, she's always going somewhere. And I mean, she's been to Mexico two times in the past two months. And, you know, and she's the one who is really, she, uh, she's the firstborn to her sci-fi tech dad, you know. So, she has, you know, if you believe in spiritual stuff, you're wacky. I mean, this is, I remember this was my per like, we were polar opposite. Why do people get pulled into polar opposite relationships? It's to learn. And uh, so, um... You know, I was with a lot of people who thought I was crazy and told everybody, you know, I was okay. Uh, but I was so used to it my whole life. Just, you know, yeah, being an outcast, being a weirdo. Oh, she really, really believes Bigfoot's real. Like, she really believes it. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, the, um, so she's really going through it to have this spiritual awakening. Like, she's really, and she's coming tomorrow and exciting i'm really excited because yesterday you know she's really going through it and she uses counseling like she's in total western medicine total like you know, she told me she needed to up her um antidepressant uh you know the one that's so famous and it, to me you know i just wanted to, oh please please stop stop oh. 
but I can't just, you know, and that is what she's going through right now is this, um, this childhood need of, I need to please my parents, but it isn't, I, I keep saying, Hey, I'm not trying to get you to please me, but you know, the pressure comes from within. It's from like when we're a child and somebody says something, then we start pulling this pressure in like, Oh my God, we got to do this. We got to do that. You know, and we start playing the record. We start, we start putting the grooves in the record. We start, uh, we start, uh, you know, programming our minds. And so then as things occur, we react to that. And so she, uh, anything I say, she feels like, you know, if she doesn't do what I say, I'm going to, you know, fall apart. I'm going to be distraught. I'm going to be disappointed in her. She's failed me. You know, all these things that the person starts playing, then they hold it against the person they feel is giving them this but it was given to you you know years ago it's what you did with it it's not like i'm handing you this right now i'm not doing this you're replaying a program you are going back in time so that you can and so then you are being resentful to the person in the present moment for something that happened when you were a child which you can't even be you know I mean, so many people get so upset about this stuff, but it's like people have to go through things to learn. And for one thing is, you know, you're a kid and you can't sit here and, and uh, punish yourself for your reaction that you had. And in the same idea of that, you can't punish your reaction to whoever it is that you are in conflict with because they have also learned and grown. So, Hopefully, if it's somebody who really, really struggles with growing and is really, really stuck and stagnant, and a lot of older people are, but there's a lot of younger people are too. A lot of younger people are very programmed into ego, and a lot of older people. So, so there's a lot, I mean, it's not just one group, but anybody you have that is really, really stuck, then um, it is... Um, to me, it's always like they need to ask the questions or whatever. So asking the questions will always open up the doors in your mind. Um, but I feel like I got to skip back. So she was saying about the traveling thing because I'm going off on a thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for my daughter to come because she said she wants to talk to me about something about um, her not feeling, uh, wasn't not supported. It was feeling... Uh, it was, it was strange because I took it and I said, so you felt like I was judging you. And she's like, no, what are you talking about? I'm not judging me. And, and so then she said it again. And to me, I still heard judging you, but it wasn't the words. And that's what I'm talking about. We all have these, um, words that mean certain things to us. So it is in the same thing. Like we are constantly creating this experience like when you can see like you're going through like you're replaying things and you're you're creating the experience it's coming through you I, I, hopefully that makes sense cuz i can i can see it but i don't know you know it may just sound like the same old thing but anyways so um uh whatever it was she said it was something like feeling like um I wasn't not supportive. It was something. And so, um, I was like, Oh, interesting. Okay. Yes. Oh, I can't wait. I want to talk about this. And so we're going to talk this weekend and she's going to tell me how she felt like the thing, like I'll see a different side of myself through her. It doesn't mean like I need to change it or shame myself or whatever. I'll go through the, the experience, you know, um, but we have to, we have to witness, we have to accept the part of ourselves that we have touched others' lives. And in the more that you can, and, and, and you know, clean it up, you know, listen to them. And remember, listening is so um, important to people's healing. And so, you know, listening to her and, um, you know, through her experience, she'll learn. And my, my thing has always been super defensive because people will assume that you're doing something with an alternate intention. And my intention was never, you know, do her, cause harm, you know. So uh, I would become defensive because it's important to me to be, you know, of the positive or something. Like my soul is a little whacked on that. 
And that's why, like, I'm, you know, not going to shame people for, you know, listening to the, the um, or getting caught up in some darkness because, you know, it is easy. I just, that's not my, um, I don't know. I, I think that there is a lot of people who have a lot of light as all I can think of, like a lot of that energy and, you know, all of our souls, we all have different energy. And so anyways, I just think that that is, um, but that can drive you crazy too, because then you're constantly, constantly, I, I don't know. Cause I feel like everybody should do it, but it's like a, a, a self-evaluation ever all the time. It's like, I, like I, there's sometimes where I feel like, yeah, we are some sort of AI or something. Our AI is not different than us because there is a way that we process that is a self-evaluation and all experiences as you go for some of us. Like, I don't know how others work, but um, anyways, so it will be, you know, some stuff I'll go through talking to her because I'll have to face some dark sides of myself and that I've hurt somebody that I love dearly and I've affected them. But on my spiritual side, I know that that is what life is all about. It's for that purpose. And so I have to also release that. And so, you know, however you have to process to get through the, the thing, you know, so you can acknowledge, so you can get the vision of yourself, you get the full view, but then you have to release it and, you know, um, however it is, you know, it could be something that's very much that you need to hear that is with some other stuff. And it can be all of a sudden like, Oh, fucking epiphany. All of a sudden, all these things just came together by this one person saying this. So, um, and, and that's the, the problem too, where so many people in society are so in fear of deep conversation and just stay in the shallow. <laughs> yeah. How's that weather? <laughs> Did you see that game last night? It's like, that's not the shit we need to be talking about. We need to talk about real shit, you know? And that isn't like, you know, every single thing we need to, you know, sit down and talk about your pain and trauma. No, but when something is real, we need to not pretend that it's not. If somebody is having something, we need to talk about it. And so, um, and people shouldn't be, you know, pressing down their pain, hiding their pain and stuff. They should be able to say, you know um, how, how, whatever, how things affect them. So anyways, I'm excited to process that, to go through it and see, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited about it, but, um, anyways, the girl who was talking about the, the travel, what we're going to be having, um, soon is, um, she says it's going to be like this super highway that's going to connect all of the continents and so, and she said, we're way closer together than what they tell us anyways, but it's going to be this super highway that connects us. And then we're going to have these other ways of travel. And I've heard there's going to be like these trains or something and you can get on it and be there in one minute or something, but that's still control something to me is the way the, the way it would be the most authentic would be like Star Trek, you know, to move us into that kind of, you know, practicing, being able to like dissolve ourselves and then reappear somewhere else. You know, I don't know how it all works, but I know that would be more of a, you know, there's just other ways to travel. And, and when you listen to the, the secret space program, guys, the whistleblowers from that, like there's a, uh, there little ships would come and pick them up. These little fast, like, I don't know, spaceship Corvettes or something. So, I mean, it could be stuff like that that will travel, but it's not like we're leaving unless everything is going to be like we're completely underwater, but there wouldn't be no land mass. There still is going to be like the, the plasma or the, um, I, it's not going to be like we're in water because there's still going to be land. So there would still be, and I don't know if it's going to be carbon based or crystalline, like what people keep talking about. Like that's what these things that are happening in our bodies is changing us to be adapted to this new crystalline. We won't be carbon based. And that is uh, another thing with the crystalline. That's why, like why we'll live so much longer and we'll be um, younger and healthier. Like the more that you do your healing and do all of that stuff, the more your body starts going backwards anyways. And so, um, 
that that I really think is uh, for sure. I think that there is something about the more that you get rid of chemicals, the more you start relying on your body, start focusing on nature and the the, the um, it's, it's just a mindset. It isn't even like you you have to be vegan. You have to do. It. It's not like that. It's this. It's a mindset. It's once you flip your mind into that kind of way you can't do certain like you'll just start not doing certain things and you'll just start seeing like the more you take out the toxins the better your body just kind of keeps coming back and coming back and being like oh god that was hard man thank you and so you just keep getting better and better and better I think I don't know maybe that's an illusion maybe I feel like I'm getting younger looking and I'm getting older looking I don't know but um I feel like it is that I feel like I'm getting younger, not older. So, um, anyways, um, there was a bunch of things I was, oh, yesterday I had a trauma, traumatic, uh, it's so weird because I see all these different people on, um, TikTok, like all these animal rescue things and stuff, like people dumping animals all over. Like there's so many horrible stories out there, fuck man. And, um, and then people with these nature rescues and stuff, like all sorts of weird stuff. And so, um, you know, I was driving, especially yesterday I was driving. And so then I start like trying to watch the side of the road, like, okay, if I see a bag, I better pull over. And, um, cause I guess bags apparently on the side of the road now got just live animals in them. And uh, then, um, um, and so then I was also, I better watch and see, you know, there's a little animal come out of the forest, you know, it's like, I got to be aware of my environment if this is going on all the time. And so I drove, you know, and then I was like, okay, I'm just getting wacky. I'm getting wackier and wackier. <laughs> like, I can't just sit here and focus. Something, if something is meant for you, it comes to you. It's going to come to you when it's meant for you. You don't have to be looking and stuff. It's going to be obvious. And, uh, you know, and that's so much about what they tell me all the time in my, um, for the stuff that I'm doing in my own stuff. You know, they are constantly, you don't ever have to push and try and force anything. Things will come to you. It is what, the energy you put out will come back to you. And uh, so if you, you put out energy in a positive direction, then that energy will come back to you in a positive way. And so that's why, you know, to me, it's like, I don't know what's about to happen and I don't want to, um, you know, I just got to let it go, let go. And it's like that thing, let go, let God, that has been a thing that stood out to me for so long, but that has been a battle that I've had for so long, ever since I was a kid about control and having faith and just relax, let it happen, quit trying to control it. So this is a huge challenge for me. And it's a challenge, man, I'll tell you. But um, there was another thing that she said, too. Because um, she was saying something about... Um, <coughs> was it the money thing? I don't know. Maybe it'll come back to me. Because there was something else that she was saying that I was like, oh, I say that. Um, the... Uh, let me think, because there was some more stuff that I had seen that I wanted to say. I don't even know if I just stopped in the middle. I just have these things coming into my head. That's what I'm saying. Like, it is very difficult to just be, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, to keep all of the moments tied together. I'm having a hard time with that. Um, so I was out there. Okay, so the door was open and Stella was outside. Because uh, it had to be how I heard it. And I was sitting here looking at TikToks. And still was laying on the porch and the door was open. And I heard a crow going crazy. And I was like, what in the hell? It was just going crazy. I was like, man, is that several crows? Like, what's going on? And so I went out there and um, started walking down the driveway. I could see it was one crow. It was going fucking berserk. And so I start walking up. It is across the street. And so this is two other people's yards. And um, and people here, most people don't have a fence. It's just this, it's, it's, it's strange how it is. Because it's, it's rural and you're out. But 
like if you put your foot on somebody's property line, they'd come out and shoot you. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's strange. But so, um, the, the one house is down on these giant ass trees across their front. The, those tall skinny trees. They cut down all of the, I don't know how many trees they had. I just know when, um, when I moved in here, my ex, uh, he, he, he drove the truck. And or the the grandpa, I'll say that because I have too many exes. I can't just call him the ex. He's the grandpa because he's still involved in our life. I, or, of course he is. Um, so um, then um, he drove the truck when I moved here. And so the people across, he, talk, he was talking to the people out there because the truck got stuck because it was ice. And um, so he was talking to those people. And they said that about cutting down all the trees. So they told him. So he was the one who came and started telling me about cutting down all my trees. I was like, I'm not cutting down my trees. I want to be in the forest. <laughs> oh my God, I cut down my trees. And, um, you know, and they always have reasons why you should. But anyway, so they cut down their trees. And then they put up those skinny ones that go across the front like a fence, you know. So I'm walking over there and this is the lines are up and the, the crow is up here squawking its head off, going crazy. And so I'm trying to see what, I, you know, it's obviously upset about something. And so when I would get up there, I could hear another bird that was going crazy, fucking crazy. And, um, and it was a totally different sound and I couldn't see it. And my eyes are just jacked, man. I swear to God, it is so frustrating not to be able to see good. And, um, so the one, the one bird is making this totally different, but you can tell it's panic, 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 panic. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I supposed to be seeing? What is going on over here? Then fucking Bert, that motherfucking Bert. God, that Bert's a bitch ass. That Bert has got attitude up the fucking ass, man. That dude, he's constantly strolling and strutting through our yard. Like, yeah, try some bitch. <laughs> And Stella doesn't even smell him anymore, I don't think. She just, she gets real pissed when she goes out in the morning and she smells the furniture. She's like, those bitches been in here on the furniture. And I was like, they're just sleeping. Just don't worry about, it. who knows, they're probably over there marking my shit just to fuck with Stella because of bitches. So, I've been giving them offerings though. I've been cooking her these whole chickens. I've been baking them. And then I take the bones and throw them out into the green belt. It's all just forest ground. It's like, you know, it's deep and stuff. But it's always like, I'll give them an offering. Maybe they'll sit over there and eat that. And, um, but Bert, I think he's coming in to try and get the birds or something over here. And, and I don't know if he's trying to get the squirrels too or what the fuck, but he's a little bitch ass. And, um, and so he's, he's over there in the fucking things. And I'm like, Bert, get your, go home. Oh, no, he didn't go home. He just keeps going in those things. And these birds keep going fucking wacky. And I can't go over there and grab his little fucking ass and take him home. And um, so he's, uh, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. And so I'm just like, I'm just kind of frustrated because I'm in these other people's yards. And the cat won't fucking go. These birds are going mental. So I, and I don't know. If I started to walk away and I think, no, I think, I don't know. Cause I was walking around there some trying to look and see, but I did find a baby crow and it was on the ground and then I kept going, man, did I hurt it more? Did I step on it not seeing it? Like it's just can't get that out of my head this morning, but a uh, little baby crow and oh my gosh, it had the longest legs and stuff. And, um, it was, um, I, I, I didn't know what, you know, it was a baby crow on the, dying on the ground. So I picked it up and I tried to look and see if I saw some more. Cause I was still like, why is the other bird going whacked out? There's gotta be another nest here. Is fucking goddamn bird just here. Just chowing down on all these birds, motherfucker. And, um, and I gotta keep telling myself that's nature. That is not, he's not a motherfucker. He's going his natural instinct. I've got to, I've always had a problem with the circle of life. And so, um, I get the little, uh, one, you know, and I couldn't see anymore. So I go and I get a box and I wrap him and try and get him warm and he's struggling. And I went in and I got some stuff to try and um, give him something thing to see. Cause that's what I keep seeing people doing on these things on the record recording, record the little, um, videos they're making. And so 
I tried to do that. And he had open. He would open his mouth, and I was like, "Oh, he's, he's, he's doing the, the, he's dying. He's doing that death, like, because oh. Oh. he was not, you know, what? Like I would put the thing, the dropper up to his mouth, and then do a little squeeze, and it would just be like, it wasn't like, like that. And so, but each, it was like a death. But I was, it was really sad. But I just got him really comfortable and stuff. And I went in and tried to watch a couple of, um, a couple times to see if he was getting better or whatever. And he wasn't. He did die and stuff. I, and the birds wouldn't stop. I went back out there, and the little one was going fucking bonkers. And I went and took another little box, and I was trying to, and the uh, bird's still in there fucking fucking around he probably ate all the babies or something i don't know if two two different um nests fell i don't know what the fuck happened uh, who knows bert could have climbed the fucking tree and knocked the nest down he's such a fucker he could have climbed up both of those and knocked them down he could have jumped i i don't know he is i've seen that that cat run up the side of a tree like fucking 40 feet up and sit there and they have fucking jump this guy is crazy. So, um, he's the one who's always fucking with Stella. So, anyways, uh, my, and I was like, oh, my God, I do not. This is horrible. It's horrible. And then I, I couldn't do anything. I just had to come in, and then it just kept screaming and screaming. I was going out there. I was like, I don't see. I can't. I'm sorry in there. And be bird again. And I was like... Man, I'm sorry. I don't know what I mean. There's nothing I can do. I'd have to walk around this fence tree, go into these people's driveway that they do not want, and start chasing Bert and trying to find the nest. It's like, man, I was like, man, that is, uh, and then it was like, fuck, do I just do that? I'm like, fuck. I just, I already know that the neighbors already think like this lady is wacky out here talking to the birds, trying to find what, uh, they don't give a fuck. Who knows if they even fucking noticed? It's just like people don't give a fuck. They don't pay any attention. I was like, how can there be this much squawking? And all y'all just sit around just like, nobody came out. Nobody came out while I was out there looking. Nobody came out and said, what's going on? What's, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. And, I, and anybody you notice, I bet they're just watching out the window. Oh, what's she doing now? Hmm, what's she doing now? It's like, oh, damn. That's why I said I feel like, I don't know, it's like being a, alone in my own reality or something. And it, and then the birds, I just, I felt like I failed them. I felt sad. And then it was just like, man, when you get more and more connected to nature and it's just, uh, it's just so sad to, uh, Man, and even I'm in mean, there, they're like, okay, that bird just came in for that, just to fall out of the nest, just to die. That energy just came in to experience falling out of the nest and dying. I'm like, what? <gasps> what? Like, I, I, I'm like, uh, when you understand that souls are the creators of their own thing, it's like, some of them are just so much. But see, that's where people want to blame stuff on God. All this horrible stuff is God's fault. What God would let this happen? Pretty nice one. Is that each person gets to, you know, choose their own, their own reality. They get to choose their own existence. So they get to, you know, decide what they want to experience for themselves. So, you know, and then in this, you know, lower vibrate, this density is where so much of the toxic experiences can occur going up you can't have all of those toxic occurrences that's what i'm always telling myself about the where we're headed is about the we just won't have those um you know super toxic things there won't be people losing their homes and going homeless and uh all that there will be work there's going to be work to becoming who you want to be. You know, becoming your best version isn't an overnight sensation. It's work. It's knowing yourself. It's being driven, not being put off or put down by anybody else and staying on track 
and staying, you know, your own advocate, your own best friend, being there for yourself. Yesterday, my one brother, as, as we used to be really close, and then this, all the division that happened and stuff, there's, you know, a lot of things that we were separate about that came more to the surface. And so we have not had much um, relationship over the last few years. Um, but yesterday he texted me to ask me if I remembered something. And I was like, yeah, I remember. And so we had a whole conversation, but it was about that too. It's about, you know, uh, because he's the one who has always been the savior in the family. And I, you know, when the, the last time he was saving my sister, I was like, um, you got to stop, you know, you, you, uh, and, and people don't understand when you're taught, like when I'm talking on a certain level, they don't understand what I'm saying. And so I got to always keep that in mind and it can be frustrating. But so when you're saying, you know, you're doing your, your ego, you're trying to be the savior. And you, so you, it's you who needs to work on that part of you. So you don't feel like you need to do that to go save somebody else. So you can feel good about yourself. But you, people can't understand those kinds of things. It, it, that's why I say it is like things play out. And, the, and things like people like me who are out here talking about this stuff, it isn't to see that's why it's not in your face. You have to go and find it. You have to go and seek it. It's not like I'm just coming and, you know, it's not like a cult leader and, you know, just to gather everyone around and just beat it into their head. It is the seeker will go out and that is where the universe will use certain uh, information for the person to find on their path. I have so many different ones where it's just like you see this one person say this one thing and um and it can be totally profound, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I needed to hear that, man, that was that was perfect. And um so there's lots of people, like we all play roles. So there's lots of people who are playing those roles. That's why I said like they'd even told me like all of my videos, well, like two thousand videos on YouTube, is um, that that they will be able to have somebody who has some kind of a thing going that they would be drawn right to the video that I would be talking about that thing. That I'm talking about when the energy changes. Right now, this is um, this, this is what's weird is like this small group we have that has been going through this part. For, you know that we've been going through this together but there's going to be you know when the things flip it's going to be a totally different kind of energy is going to come in and so that's why it was like it's it's um it's, it's so interesting this is interesting to watch you know to watch how this stuff plays out to see like the stuff that they tell me is that like going to play out the way that they say that is a it's a curious a thing to see because it should be a completely different energy but it should be a lot of helping people to see things that they hadn't seen before so and that is all it is you know once you start opening your mind and you start asking the questions then there's all sorts of you know people out there dropping uh, seeds and stuff and your brain is hungry to plant its garden to uh to uh thrive to uh, the the abundance the what is that called like the harvest and that is trippy but, and you know the the book of one you know because it's, it's picking up a lot of attention you know the more people who come into spirituality and stuff and so that book is gets a lot of attention and um in that book they call it the harvest what the the ascension the the souls the harvest it is like you're harvesting yourself and um but i just saw a guy saying that the that whole thing he he said he did a bunch of research into it and i don't know this is where everything you just got to take it with a grain of salt like the stuff that was in the the book of one the stuff i read and stuff like it was stuff i knew in my inner knowing and so he's saying that that was all a CIA plant, that they, um, that was a, a whole thing was a big old psyop of the CIA. I'm like, I don't know, you know, if, if, and that the people have come out and said that now, I, I mean, David Wilcock has talked about, like, he knew those people, I swear, uh, has talked about those people and them being not at all like that, not at all like phony or, yeah, that was all 
fake. No, that's not what I had ever heard. So I don't know. I just, I hear some of that stuff and it's just always like, mm, you just never know. You never know about any of this stuff. I mean, the, the CIA is the arm of the, the extension of the control factor of this place, of this uh, environment, you know, this habitat is controlled by a group and that group does use uh, the CIA is their police. All police, all the all the police forces is all just to control us. All the different, you know, they come up with agency after agency after agency. It's all just to control us. And but, but we have to say, hey, I don't, you don't have any rights over me. You're you're not you're not my mom. <laughs> you're not my dad. Shut up. So uh, to me, it's like you know, people have to start doing that for themselves they have to start going hey i don't need you fucking telling me shit and um, that is when you know there's gonna be a lot of changes um but the one guy he was saying um because uh, what was it now i got a couple of things going like because it was something with the solar event thing and i saw somebody oh because she was saying uh, I say everybody's talking about the solar event thing now. So crazy because when I was talking about it, I sounded so crazy like it was 2015. And now everybody's talking about like, I'm, 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 just not, I'm, not, I'm always ahead of my time. Like, I'm, always, I'm always just like doing something before everybody else. But um, so she was saying though the same thing as me. <clears throat> she was like, I, it doesn't make sense to me until this other stuff happens, then the solar flash so that's and that's what I it doesn't make any sense. You we got too many ball the balls have to fall. I think the balls falling, the disclosure that is what creates it. And we I mean plus all these storms, I guess because the one video I saw a guy, um, his sister lives in Guam and she's pregnant and she is married to somebody who's a resident uh, you know, a local person, you know, somebody who's from Guam. And so all his family's from Guam. So she has a big family there. You know, she didn't just move there by herself or something. And so she was talking to her brother and the storm was wiped out Guam. She said it's, it's wiped out. She sent some footage and he showed it. She said the houses are just wiped out. There's no power, uh, it's devastated. People are devastated. It's uh, it's a mess. And he said, "There's no news talking about it." He's like, "It's crazy. There's no news talking about it." But it, you know, it's it's a devastation. There's so many of those, but there's always the reverberation. Like, no, there's going to be. I I just know the West Coast is going to be hit big. Like I don't know. Like, it could be. It's going to be these chemicals. It could be you know another. Who knows? Who knows? What the fuck, you know, it just, you, know, you can sit and worry and worry and worry and worry and drive yourself crazy because there's like a vast amount of things they could do and where they could do it. Or you could just be like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to make the best of this day and, um, you know, live my day, enjoy this day. If I died, would I be like, oh God, I'm so glad I just sat there on the couch crying all day, stressing out. Or I'd be like, damn it, I wish I would have went and experienced blah, blah, blah that day. So, you know, I think, um, you know, it, the stress and fear and all that is just a waste of energy. It's just, it's a waste. There's nothing, I think the, the biggest thing that what they try and get me to really understand is that fear is a, a waste of the energy because fear doesn't really exist. You have nothing to fear. There's nothing to be scared of. Everything that you fear is created and isn't real. And so you put all of your energy into these things that are created that you give life to. Like I said, like, you know, a thing falling and suddenly somebody thinks they've got a demon in their kitchen, you know, and they give it a name and talk to it and all this stuff. And you have so many energies and spirits around you all the time that want to talk. Yeah, they're going to jump in. Hey, yeah, that was me. I claim it. Ah, oh, talk to me. Talk to me. Just talk to me. <laughs> like, it's like, no, we don't need to be talking to you. I'm supposed to be talking to the people who are in my realm. You know, I mean, the ones who come in and talk, like, I don't know. Some of these could be talking to me, but I'm not going to go and, uh, I mean, they're, uh, yesterday I even did a whole fucking long ass clearing with the sage and stuff. Doesn't do anything. 
still all these people just hanging around and I don't know what the fuck. I, I, I just don't know what the fuck. I swear to God, I just don't know if it's just I'm in this portal area where, like, for all I know, I'm in some other reality right in the middle of an airport. Like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's just weird. So, um, anyways, the, um, was there something else? Because there's more storm. there's more storms, of course, there's just tons of storms. The money thing, um, uh, there's a whole thing about the quantum system has been running since 2020. And uh, I don't know, it's going to be just that, however, to me, and other people also keep saying the same thing. And this is what I kind of see it like, like this Twilight Zone episode. Because it was like this Twilight Zone episode and it, it, the lights all go out in this neighborhood and then everybody's running around and people turn on each other. They start blaming, oh, it's you. And then they all go fucking crazy and start, you know, hurting each other and acting out of craziness. People don't, you don't act the same when you're calm as when you're crazy. And so they start acting out of craziness, going just crazy. And then, um, um, Twilight Zone, uh, I I don't remember, it wasn't like there was, I don't remember there being like brutal killings ever or something, but I think that there was some, you know, insinuation in the episode, and then all of a sudden the lights come on, and it was nothing what they thought, and that, that, the, the part, because to me this is kind of what's going to go down. It's like the lights are going to, but, you know, it could just be that they're going to just, you know, where our phones are going to start uh, beeping and tell us to go to a certain place and, you know, talk to us through the TV or something. I don't know. But it could be that the a, a thing happens, an explosion or whatever happens, and then um, uh, the power goes out and then, uh, you know, people are left to think for themselves. And that's when, you know, they don't know how to do that. They don't know what to think, how to think, what to do, where to go, what to, you know, and that's when panic ensues because they haven't developed enough as a being and they're very attached to the the game. And so then the power goes out and so they go and they do like looting. I mean, there'll be crimes and there'll be the instigators out there who are meant to do that. And then that, so that energy is in flow. So the other people, they pick that energy and they flow with that energy and then go and start becoming just as chaotic as, and that's why it's going to be so dangerous in a lot of places. But there will be, you know, looting and um, attacking, like it's the end of the world, who cares, you know, like, I always wanted to murder somebody, so today's the day, you know, so there'll be that. And, but you got to remember that even when that seems absolutely chaotic, well, the person who's going to be the receiver of this said crime would be in cahoots with the person who's going to commit the crime. The two souls have created this little crime scene together. So don't get too caught up in the drama. And, and even when it's little kids and shit like that, you got to remember that's grown ass adult. That is not fucking little kids. That's a grown ass soul. So, um, the, um, uh, the chaos and stuff is going to be going. And then all of a sudden the lights come on and it's like, it's like people are going to be all of a sudden standing there, you know, with their dicks in their hand and fucking uh, poop on their face. You know, they're going to be like very exposed when that occurs. That is going to be part of the humbling experience of like, Oh my God. What the fuck? I just lost my goddamn mind. I just did this and this and then hopefully, you know, you don't go too far. <laughs> you know, but that is, um, w those are what they're going to come in and learn. And that was just like just directly right out of the Twilight Zone episode. Probably a, a few different ones, but it will be the, 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 what they did is so they can see themselves. So that they can the the seeing themselves the embarrassment the shame and then pulling it back in to understand and process and to 
you know, we're, I mean, we're on the track to developing our best selves, not ourselves that lose our damn mind. You know, the lights go out. Oh my God. Um, I guess I'm just going to go kill somebody. <laughs> you know, that, that is, um, you know, people need to get a hold of that. The soul needs to see like that kind of shit. So, um, and it's so weird is how that stuff is plays out, but it, I, I don't think, um, well, some has got to be, I, 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 you know, I don't know how so much, uh, horrible stuff gets into, um, you know, life experiences. Like, I don't know if people just really, I, I had heard before that a lot of people like to go through the darkness to learn. And so come in and do a lot. But, you know, we need the dark. We need all of the spectrum. What was it yesterday? I was thinking about something. And, um, oh, because it was the, I was in the grocery store. And I was over at this candy section. I was getting a bunch of these um, cocoa bars or whatever. Because I had went before I was going to get chocolate chips. You know, I've been making the biscotti and chocolate chip cookies and stuff like that. And so then I was like, well, I will, um, I need to get some more chocolate chips. And so I was looking at them and I was like, fuck. And then plus now I was hearing all this stuff with Nestle's and Hershey's. It's like, motherfuck, shit. And so, and they were out of chocolate chips. All they had was some sort of, but they were Nestle's still, truffle chips. So I was like, I'm just going to go to the candy aisle and get some dark chocolate candy bars and I'll just chop them up myself and put them in. And that'll be better for me anyways. So I went over there and they had a whole bunch of them for 50 cents. And so, and you can eat them, just regular chocolate, not baking chocolate. And so, um, I was like, fuck yeah. So I got a bunch of those. And, um, and uh, but I had gotten them before. So this time when I went back, I got a whole shit ton of them. I was like, fuck, I'm getting a bunch of these now because that works. And so, um, while I was doing that, these couple is over there and they were like, oh, we should get some of these cupcakes. And they're looking at the little uh, Debbies and they hold up the zebras and in my head, I'm like, oh, my God, that's such poison. Don't eat that garbage. It's like, oh, God, these people, they need to know this is poison. And so I was just like, um, you know, okay, just just stop. And, and, and it's a spectrum. Because there would be definitely somebody who would be able to come up behind me and go, oh, my God, you shouldn't eat that. That is poison. Like, we all, it really is like that, um. What was that? Because uh, they made it into a scary movie that uh, where the mouth to ass, mouth to ass, mouth to ass. That really is like what we are. <laughs> we are just all the this connected of a spectrum of, you know, we all have our place. And so, um, you know, I, it was funny as in a, when I went out of the car and either still telling me this stuff and the spectrum and of uh, the food and how like so many people I mean you can be so extreme like I see a totally extreme mark it's like it drives you insane like how can I even eat anything everything is fucking poison and but I know as a spiritual person that 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 anything that starts creating that that uneasiness that anxiety that Fear, that is what you're supposed to be working on because your soul has no fear. Your soul, anything that comes up that is about fear or anxiety or something, that is something for you to be like, okay, wait a minute, let's, let's talk about this. What are you worried about? And um, uh, because there's nothing, you know, that we're in a game. I mean, it would be really sucky if we were in the game and we couldn't even experience it. Like we're in the game to experience it. And, um, you know, it's, it's just so crazy how really elaborate it is. I like, guess it, it was also in the conversation yesterday with them where I was like, it is, um, it's so weird because you, you would think that we are flesh and blood. Like I can get where they start telling us that because it, it makes sense because we have so many things that can affect us in that kind of manner. But it, see, then, it, man, that is trippy. Like, I don't know how to explain that at all. Uh, but that does, it, it's kind of um, like the, the surgery stuff. Because we're not supposed to let them cut into us. 
and then how uh, it is like it's kind of like our mind like those people who those uh religious people i think they were who would just like go into a person's body but see our body's not real it's like knowing that it's a robot or something and but then it's the person has to allow it you have to open yourself to allow that intrusion so i don't know but we're going into this quantum thing it is we're it's like we're going to be able to reset ourselves it's it's going to be something about with the frequency and we'll be able to like reset ourselves or something. And, and another thing to look out for is this starlight. So starlight is the something with the new system. And I guess it's not going to be like um, the internet and stuff like that. Everything is just going to be quantum. I don't, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't fully understand all the stuff about quantum. Like I can understand the concept or something, but you know, I don't understand the whole entire thing, but you know, the more that we detach and become our beings, that we aren't attached to the reality. The reality can't control us. So then we we know we can move around. We know things are not as they appear. And so, I don't know. I, I just know. I I just know there's something about the the portals, the backdrops, the movement, the control of our movement. The, you know, if you have, a, it's like a, like if we're all bees and they don't want us to fly around everywhere, they want to just keep us in the hive because they don't want us to go out and experience and get all the good flowers or something. So it's kind of like somebody's going to bust a hole in the hive so that we can all go out and experience the world. And that, that, being out is going to man some of this stuff is so hard to explain okay sometimes the vision stuff is like so hard to explain it's frustrating plus i've already been taught in my brain is uh i would say some of the stuff that i'm saying just go in and meditate on it like go in and think about it just go in and close your eyes and ask them to show you and so, like, if you're trying to understand, like, if I'm saying stuff and it's like, what is she saying? What the fuck is she talking about now? Just go and ask them. So, go and sit. Calm your mind and um, just talk to them. Ask them. Show, show me what you're showing. Because then they can show the visions. Because when you try and say stuff, it, it just sounds weird. Um, but they can show you in the pictures. They can show you in the vision and the vision, when the vision comes in, it's like, it's like the vision comes in with all knowing, like you'll understand it, but it's, it's, it's just super hard to explain. But any of this stuff that I say, I, I think you can just, I mean, I, I mean, we all have our own higher selves, but there's all tons of beings out there trying to explain to us to help us prepare and to get us ready. So there's tons of beings out there that are speaking. And, uh, you know, and it's all by vibration. So you uh, kind of, um, I don't know if you have to meet their vibration, but see, we're much higher vibration. So just focusing on your spirit raises your vibration because focusing on the the, the uh, world is, is a low density. It's when you you're focused you're you're focused on it when you pull your focus in then it is a different vibration and so then you can vibrate and you can um connect and listen and then and when if you if you haven't heard them yet you may think that the, the listening or seeing is going to be different than it is it 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 could be that it comes in and then it's like, wait, that's a thought. That's what I, that's a thought. And then you have to start seeing like, oh, so all the things that I thought I was having thoughts, I was thinking, I was really somebody was telling me something because that's a thought. And so I think a lot of people start realizing that the thought, and then you, you know, like even, I mean, this happens to me all the time. Uh, you know, like at the grocery store, it'll happen a bunch of times. And so, um, you know, because they're always bringing me certain things, like exactly like I 
tell them and then they'll bring you. That's where people talk about manifesting. This is the kind of stuff they're, they're talking about, I think. And so they'll bring um, stuff to me. But see, when you are when you can get caught up and go, oh, see, like, oh, man, I, man, I did that so good. Or I, I can't believe this. Or God, I'm so lucky and stuff like that. And I am always like, oh, thank you. Gosh, that was so cool. Thank you. And I was, you know, because you got to realize the, the chances of something happening. The chances of anything happening are so slim. So every single thing that happens is so fucking designed down to the fucking millisecond. Every path you cross, every step you take, every breath you take, every fucking thing is completely designed down to the most smallest part. So, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to go now. <laughs> yes, there's my mic drop. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> just, I'm just talking. Just, um, just, just ask them. That's all I can say. Just ask them and, uh, you know, be open to receiving, be open to receiving information and be in gratitude, you know, and start really realizing that thoughts aren't just coming from you. The things that you think are thinking are, can be, unless you're just repeat, repeat, repeat on something, the things that just come in out of the blue, that's coming from somebody out there. It's not coming from something in here. It's out there. And, um, some of the stuff is like, it's imprinted in us. It's, it's in us already. And so that energy comes and it, it just all of a sudden it, it sparks that to come back to life, that memory. So that energy hits into you and it sparks that memory back to life. And that is more what it can feel like is a memory. Like, oh, ah, I just remembered. And so anyways, you know, as everybody has got to figure this stuff out for themselves and just keep trying different things and stuff because... And, and then listening to different people, if you're having problems being able to communicate with them or translate or understand what the communication is, because just keep going with it and it will start, you know, you'll, you'll become a master. And now that even the lights are telling me it's time to go, it's time to go. I'm going to sit outside today before I lose all my tan I got and I barely peeled. I'm telling you those oils. And it is a geranium oil, fennel seed oil. I mean, extracts are the new ones I just got. And both of them smell so good. Fennel seed oil smells so much like licorice. And the uh, geranium one, it smells really good too. And I can't remember the oil though that she said to use. And, um, and then some of the herbs, I wanted to say those ones too. Because I, um, I got dandelion root. I got... A boondock, boom, boondock root, um, mullen, nettles, uh, and there's there's more. When you go and look all these things up, it is um, it, 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 it there's so many good ones. Like the oh yeah, I'll say this before I go, because I was at the grocery store, and the um, when I was ringing up. The, it's so funny, too, because there was some people behind me, and they only had one thing. I had a shit ton of stuff. So I was like, go ahead, go in front of me. And they were so appreciative and stuff like that. It's like people need, like, little small things like that. And, and you know, as the person, like, I could have been halfway out the door after waiting for the people because, um, you know, you got to wait for them to stuff and the chats and ringing stuff up. You know, it takes time. And, um so it really is, you know, uh, but if you don't do that also, though, think of all the negative energy you have behind you, daggers being, you know, because they're just there for one minute, blah, you know, so you can kind of relieve that tension. But so uh, I was in line for a while with this woman and when I got up there and she was very chatty and stuff. And um, we were talking about food and health and, you know, you got to really watch out what you buy and stuff like that. And so she was more of a health food nut and uh, she was this little dining woman and she's like, yeah, I'm, si I'm 68 years old. And, um, I didn't say anything about my age. Um, she was very proud because she was doing so good. I and mean, I know like, 
I know when I talk to my mom, like you start getting up to certain ages already in the sixties, you've already got people who are like, Oh my God, I'm so old. You got people in their fucking fifties. You got people in their thirties. I swear to God. But when you get in your sixties, like, Oh my God, I'm so old. I'm so old. I'm so old. You know, they start just stressing and stressing and stressing seventies, eight. So when you, um, you have some people and they are like, man, I'm just, I'm, you know, they feel good, but they're, they're all their friends. It's just like, cause they're so old, so old. So, you know, you get around some of them and they're like, I feel great. And I'm just, you know, it's, you know, really good for them to be, um, so it's important to really take care of yourself. But there was something else I was going to say about that interaction. And I can't remember. It just went out. Maybe that's all I was supposed to say is. You know, feel good about yourself. Don't get caught up in them feeling old. You got to keep, you know, telling yourself that you're, you got to talk to yourselves. You got to keep telling them, don't tell them they're old. Keep telling them that they're looking good. Oh man, I'm so pleased with how you're looking today. <laughs> Do stuff like that. Anyways, I have no idea what I was about to say. There was something, but I feel like, um, there's like so much different stuff and I don't know, my brain is tired. And the nights are weird as fuck. I, I don't even know where the fuck I was last night. It was weird. It was weird. Like, it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder. I just can't wait until this shift happens. I just feel like there's going to be such a relief for so many of us who are just pulled so tight on this spiritual journey. It's like, oh, uh, we've been being pulled tight, 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 tight. And then once it goes, oh, God, it's going to feel so good. It's going to feel so good. Everything's going to just like flip us into, I think things are going to just start making sense. So anyways, we'll see. I don't know how long this can drag, but now I'm getting a phone call. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.